Hello, American Rod Shop family. Welcome back into another episode of American Rod Shop. My name is Solon, and guys, holy cow, what has been going on with these car prices? I had a very hard time trying to finish this video due to the cars that I was going to showcase are selling faster than I can get the video made. Vintage car prices across the board in the U.S. are incredibly low right now, and I think that the 10 that I have chosen to showcase here are prime examples of that. Now, I don't know how long the cars in this video are going to last at these low prices, but I think you're going to enjoy perusing these cars tonight. Also in tonight's video, we're going to find out who won Little Hot Wheels 1929 Ford Salt Lake Flats race car that we gave away in the last video for free. And we're going to give away another Hot Wheels tonight as well, and we'll draw for that one in the next upcoming video. Also for you guys, I've got you three more trivia questions. Do you think you'll get these tonight? These are based on cars from the movies. That's coming up. Plus, at the end of the video tonight, we're going to have the Fantasy Drag Racing. Now, this has got hugely popular, getting a lot of great feedback, in which we take six subscribers that are subscribed to this channel, and we will pit them against each other in three races, racing nostalgia drag cars. It'll be a lot of fun. So stick around. This is a jam-packed video for you guys tonight, and we've got a lot of cars to showcase Got you 10 that I think are incredibly priced. So let's get into the video. Number one, 1964 Buick Electra 225, listed in Saddlebrook, New Jersey for $8,000. Up for sale by the second owner is a very nice white 1964 Buick Electra 225 Coupe with an original 134,000 miles on it. This is an all-original, well-running and driving classic Buick that makes a great daily driver or even take to car shows. It is powered by the original 401 cubic inch Wildcat V8, the four-barrel carburetor, mated to a two-speed Dynaflow automatic transmission. The original paint looks decent and still displays nicely. The all-original blue interior is in incredible condition and really completes the overall look of the originality of the vehicle. All glass is good, and everything electrical works well, and the trunk area is nice also. This car comes with many extra spare parts, which includes two complete doors, a hood, a trunk, fender skirts, all glass, front and rear brakes, and more. The seller is asking $8,000 or best offer for this 1964 Buick Electra 225 Coupe. And guys, I really think this first one up is very nice and very low priced. Tell me what you think in the comments. Now if you see a car in tonight's video that you'd like to check out, the links to all these cars can be found over in this video's description. Just go over to where the description's at, click on the word more, and when that expands outward, go down until you see the car that's listed, click on that link underneath the car, and it'll take you straight to the ad where that car's at for sale. Now, as I said earlier, tonight's trivia questions are based on three movies, and they're about movie cars. First movie is American Graffiti. The second movie tonight is WW and the Dixie Dance Kings. And the third one is Thunder Road. So here's the first question up. What type of car was driven by John Milner in American Graffiti? If you know the answer to that, drop it in the comments right now. And at the end of this video, we're going to check everybody's answers to see who got what right. Number two, 1951 Custom Lincoln Continental, listed in Freeport, New York, for $10,500. Up for sale is this fully customized, professionally built, black 1951 Lincoln Continental that runs and drives perfect and has had only 27,000 miles put on it since the customization. It is powered by a 4.6 liter engine coupled up to an automatic transmission. This turnkey car is in excellent shape and has been garage kept daily since being built. Customized features of this car include the following items. Full custom black interior that features leather bucket seats, vintage AC and heat, power steering, four-wheel disc brakes, power windows, power door locks, Sony speakers, and a Bluetooth radio. 
Newer replaced items include custom LED headlights, new front and rear suspension, new wide Vogue tires, and this car comes with a clean New York title and the seller is asking $10,500 or best offer. Now if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, and share, and don't forget to turn on that notification bell. You want to be one of the first ones to get notified when these videos drop so that you'll have the earliest chance possible to try and check out these cars that are up for sale. Let's move along with number three, 1947 Dodge D24 sedan listed in Bloomfield, New Jersey for $7,600. Up for sale is this all original green colored 1947 Dodge D24 four-door sedan that runs and drives like it's supposed to. It is still powered by the original engine, which is a flathead six-cylinder coupled to the original fluid drive semi-automatic transmission. This car is all original and has an incredible original 47,000 miles on it. This car has been garage kept all of its life and it has been well maintained as evident by the pictures. The body is rust free, super straight and the paint is still very glossy. With the exception of the bumpers, all the chrome is still very shiny and displays well. Everything electrical works great and all glass is good. The original tan interior is all complete with very little wear but definitely has aged over the years to a darker color of brown. Overall, a very nice vintage Dodge for the asking price of only $7,600 or best offer. Time for trivia question number two. In the movie WW and the Dixie Dance Kings, what car did Burt Reynolds' character set on fire and burn up if you know that answer drop it in the comments and again we're going to check all these questions and answers at the end of the video this number four one i think everybody's going to love 1948 willie's overland jeepster listed in pelham alabama for twelve thousand dollars up for sale is a very awesome fully restored red 1948 willie's overland jeepster and has been driven 5,674 miles since the restoration. This little car is not only sharp looking, but runs great and is a fantastic driver and is powered by the original motor with three on the tree manual transmission. The restoration is a few years old, but recently new brakes, a new carburetor, a new starter, and a new fuel pump have been added. This car features the rag top with boot and removable vinyl windows. The interior still looks incredible. This car is not perfect. It does have some paint starting to fade in some areas, but overall this car displays very nice. The price is firm. It has no issues. The seller is asking $12,000. And guys, this thing's only about 30 minutes from where I live. I might just go by and check this thing out myself. Okay, the third trivia question. In the movie Thunder Road, Robert Mitchum's character drove two cars. What was the second car that he drove? If you know that answer, drop it in the comments right now. And we're going to check all these at the end of the video and find out who knows their movie car trivia. This number five is another vehicle that the viewers love to see listed. 1961 Ford E100 pickup listed in Anderson, Indiana for $9,500. Up for sale is this mildly customized 1961 Ford E100 pickup with the rare five window cab body version that is fastly becoming one of the most sought after versions to own in this year model. This is a very good running and driving truck that would definitely make a head turning daily driver and is good to cruise around town in or take to local shows. It is powered by the original six-cylinder engine with three-speed manual transmission on the tree. The interior looks nice and has had modern dark gray bucket seats added, but the seller has the original seats to go back in it if that's what you desire. The body is solid and straight except for a small dent in the passenger door. The paint is decent but still looks good and the modern Ford rims really look good on it. 
This truck makes a great car to drive as you restore it, asking only $9,500 or best offer for this 1961 Ford E100 pickup. And guys, I myself, I love these type trucks as well. The problem is, in my area, you just don't see that many trucks like this one. Now, if you're looking for a great gift item to find for someone who loves to watch this show, then I advise you to check out the American Rod Shop store. The link to the store can be found over in this video's description. In the store, you can find such great items as t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters, mouse pads, hoodies, and much, much more. And the sale from all these items goes back into supporting this channel. We've passed the halfway mark, and number six is the first of two Studebakers that we have for the listing tonight. 1950 Studebaker Champion, listed in Tampa, Florida, for $11,000. Up for sale by dealership is this beige 1950 Studebaker Champion that runs and drives great and makes a great daily driver or show cruiser if desired. It did receive a very nice amateur restoration a few years back and is in very good condition and has only been driven 3,950 miles since then. It is powered by the original straight six-cylinder engine and automatic transmission. The body is very straight and the paint is glossy and displays nicely. All chrome is good except the bumpers, which do need re-chroming. The restored tan interior looks great and is very comfortable and the trunk compartment is solid. This car is not perfect by no means, but does need some minimal work. It has a clean title. The dealership is asking $11,000 or best offer and is willing to take trades and can arrange financing if needed. Okay, let's pause right here and find out who won the little Hot Wheels 1929 Ford Salt Lakes Flat Racer that we gave away in the last video. We're going to go over to YouTubeCommentPicker.com. We'll put in the URL code. And then we'll hit select a comment and find out who won this. Christopher Chapola, you are the winner. Congratulations, Christopher. Please contact me within seven days at AmericanRodShop at Yahoo.com. And I'll give you details on how to collect your totally free little Hot Wheels there. In the spirit of our fantasy drag racing segment, in tonight's giveaway for this video is going to be this milk truck dragster called Altered Ego. Sharp little Hot Wheels there. This came out in 2012, so this thing's already 12 years old. We're going to give it away. All you've got to do in order to win is be a subscriber, so please subscribe. Second, put in the word dragster in the comments. Drop the word dragster in the comments. You'll be entered in to win, and then also enter as many times as you like. Each entry gives you a separate chance to be able to win this little Hot Wheels, and we'll draw for it. In the next video. Okay, let's see who lucky number seven is. 1980 Chevrolet Corvette listed in Perry, Iowa for $8,500. Up for sale is the super clean classic dark blue 1980 Chevrolet Corvette that is powered by a 350 Chevy engine that has an original 122,000 miles on it. It's coupled up to the original automatic transmission. This car is always garage kept and it runs and drives great and is a fantastic daily driver. The matching blue interior looks great and sports the classic glass T-tops. Good tires have been mounted on it 
and it has had maintenance performed on it every 3,000 miles. It does require some minor work needed, such as a repair to the speedometer, the tachometer, and the AC, which currently are not working. The seller has not had the time yet to address these issues. This is still a solid car for the low asking price of $8,500 or best offer. Okay, let's check out number eight and see if it's great. 1948 Chevrolet Style Master Coupe listed in Baxter, Minnesota for $7,950. Up for sale is this Burgundy 1948 Chevrolet Style Master Club Coupe that has just been taken out of long-term storage and is a solid and rust-free car. This car was rebuilt in the late 1980s and is a strong running and driving car, but does need some wheel cylinders and a water pump to be roadworthy. It is powered by an upgraded 235 six-cylinder engine and automatic transmission. The interior and the floor pans are in incredible condition, but it does have the brown velvet interior common with the restoration craze of the 1980s. This car has good radial tires, the glass is all nice, and all electrical components work well. You will not find a more solid car with less restoration costs needed to bring this beauty back up to par than this one. It is priced low enough to cover such cost. The seller is asking $7,950 or best offer, but will trade for pre-1966 snowmobiles or Ford Model A's. So guys, if you have any of those and you are interested in trading for this 48 Chevy Coupe, then go for it. That's what he's looking for. And if you don't find your dream car in this video, be sure to check out some of our other posted videos. There are still a lot of great cars in those, just like this video here. The last one that we posted just a few days ago. Still some very affordable cars in that video for sale. We are headed into the home stretch with number nine, and this one is the second Studebaker that I spoke about earlier that is in this listing tonight. 1953 Studebaker Champion listed in Cleveland, Texas for $10,000. For sale is this nice little black 1953 Studebaker Champion two-door sedan that runs and drives great. It is powered with a 383 engine with just over 300 miles on it, and it has Phytech fuel injection and is coupled up to a 700 R4 automatic transmission. This custom build is a great daily driver and will always draw attention wherever you pull up somewhere. This car features disc brakes all around, a new Willwood master cylinder, and a rear end from a Chevy S10 pickup. The seller is needing to sell the car and has over 20000 in receipts and information on the building of this car, including original certificates from Studebaker. The interior does need to be finished on out. The headliner, rear seat, and rear interior quarter panel have already been restored. This car has vintage air that will keep you cool while cruising. This is a very solid car with no rust, and the asking price is $10,000 or best offer for this 1953 Studebaker Champion. Hey, and listen, at the end of this video, if you would like to, drop in the comments what was your favorite car in tonight's video and why. Some of you guys are leaving fantastic comments filled full of great info, stories about cars you had when you were younger, and I just really appreciate that, and I enjoy reading that stuff so much, and I know the other viewers do as well. Okay, guys and gals, we have made it to number 10, and I appreciate each and every one of you hanging in here with me till now. Right after this one, we're going to do the Fantasy Drag Race, and if you'd like to stick around in the video for that, it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we'll check the answers on the trivia questions for tonight. Now, number 10 is a nice one. Way to go out with a bang. 1949 Hudson Commander, listed in Seattle, Washington, for $10,500. Up for sale is a very nice green colored 1949 Hudson Commander that fires right up, will start every time, and drives down the freeway with no issues. This car had a restoration 30 years ago, but has been garage kept and well maintained ever since then. The green paint is still glossy and displays beautifully. 
All chrome is in superb condition. All glass is good and everything electrical works great. The restoration process back then included a complete rebuild of the original motor, of which about 50,000 miles have been put on it since the restoration. It also received a new repaint and an interior restored back to the original specs. The owner tries to drive the car as often as possible, but as with any car that is 74 years old, it could use a little TLC in some areas. Otherwise, it is an excellent Hudson. All recorded documentation is available from the 1950s to the present time. The car has recently received all new brakes and brake lines, a new fuel tank, and fuel lines as well. It also has the rare, hard-to-find sun visor coming with it, asking $10,500 or best offer. Okay, we have made it to the Fantasy Drag Racing segment. Hard to know all you guys have been waiting on. Here's some of the drivers warming up their tires in the background. Going to shut them off for just a moment here while I can talk. Okay, we've got six subscribers going up against each other in three matches head to head. And in this very first race, we've got Pat G2308 going up against Forever U9. Now, in the second race, we've got Joseph Adkins going up against Dad's Restorations. And in the third and final race, we've got. CDR George going up against Timothy Tunnell. And guys, let's go ahead and get the first race started and get to racing. In the far lane, we have got Pat G2308 in the 65 Chevy 2. And on the inside lane, we got Forever You driving that orange 37 Chevy Coupe. They're going to be doing some burnouts here, getting those tires warmed up. Then we'll get them situated on the line and see who wins this match. Got them lined up to go here. Christmas tree starting to count down. Oh, a head start there a little bit on the outside lane with the 65 Chevy 2. And the winner of that is Pat G, 10.49 seconds. Congratulations, Pat, on winning race one. Let's review the race. Here we see Forever U9 in the 37 Chevy Coupe got off the line just a little bit late. Both cars popped a wheelie, did not seem to affect them during the race, and Pat G was able to take it on down to the finish line with a win at 10.49 seconds. Okay, getting into race number two. This is Chevy versus Chevy. Joseph Atkins is in the far lane driving the 56 Chevy. And on the inside lane is Dad's Restorations driving the 53 Chevy. We're going to get them both up to the line here. They're warming up their tires. I believe everything's looking good. We'll slowly ease them up there. Get them on the starting line and we'll get this race underway. Looks like we got them both lined up. Oh, they're coming off the line. It looks like 56 Chevy driven by Joseph Atkins. Got a little bit of a delay on the kickoff there. It means that Dad's restoration has taken the win at 12.52 seconds. Okay, let's review this race and see how everything played out while both were on the line. Looks like Joseph in the 56 got a little bit jump there. But uh, he did not break the line, so he was still good to go. And the 53, driven by Dad's restoration, just powered on down the strip and took the win in the end at 12.52 seconds. Now in this third and final race for tonight, we've got a great matchup of Ford against Ford. We've got a 62 Ford Falcon driven by CDR George going up against a Ford Mercury Cyclone 1965 model. Driven by Timothy Tennell. Both these guys are now going to be getting their tires warmed up first. And then we'll be off to the races in this last matchup of Ford against Ford. Both gentlemen will be warming up their tires with some burnouts here before they get up to the line. We'll get up here and get these guys lined up and ready to go racing.
that Falcon E's going up there a little bit. Yeah, it looks like we've got them both lined up, and now we're ready to go racing. Wow, the 62 Falcon driven by CDR George got a very mighty head start there. It appears that possibly the Mercury Cyclone driven by Timothy may have misshifted or experienced some kind of mechanical failure there. CDR George takes home the win there at 12 seconds even. Okay, let's review the race, and you can see that CDR George in the 62 Ford Falcon gets a head start there. It appears that possibly Timothy Tunnell in the Mercury Cyclone may have either popped the clutch too quick or misshifted or may have had some kind of mechanical failure there right at the starting line because uh, CDR George in the 62 Ford is actually about two car lengths ahead, and he takes home the victory in just 12 seconds. Here are your winners in the fantasy drag racing event tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And now here's the lineup for the next upcoming race in the next video. Here is the driver lineup for the subscriber drivers in the next upcoming fantasy drag race next video. You got NDS2 versus Rex and May. Race number two, you got Albert Pendergraf versus Jack Goodrich. And in the third race, you got Tully on the Rocks versus Waverly Griffin. You guys be up and ready. And in the next video, we'll do another fantasy drag racing event. Here are the answers for the trivia questions you guys have been waiting on for all night. Answer number one. The car that John Milner drove in American Graffiti was a 1932 Ford Coupe. Answer number two. Burt Reynolds' character, W.W. in the movie, W.W. and the Dixie Dance Kings, burnt up a 1955 Oldsmobile Holiday 88 Golden Anniversary Special Car. Now, in real life, there were no 1955 Oldsmobile Golden Anniversary cars ever produced. But the movie fictionalized this car as part of the plot, and it was a great story to watch. Answer number three. The second car that Robert Mitchum's character drove in Thunder Road was a 1957 Ford Fairlane 500. Now, the movie debuted in 1958, but during the filming in 1957, Ford Motor Company supplied the 1957 Ford Fairlane 500 for the movie, knowing that it would boost the automobile sales for the car, and it did. Plus, the car became an iconic movie car of all time and is a cult classic to watch for car enthusiasts today. An all change and loop job at any SOS station. A brand new set of tubeless tires. When you call Colex, say, Brother Hester, I have seen that 1955 black and gold Oldsmobile gold anniversary special on top of the first. So just call Brother Hester, say, Colex. Okay, guys and gals, that wraps up another episode of American Rod Shop. I hope you all enjoyed it. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being a viewer, and I'll see you guys in the next video.